Happy Friday, Scoop Nation. You were listening to The Morning Scoop, and I am your host, Ryan McClency. We are just one short day away from the Indiana game. And that also means that we are just 15 days away from the game. Now, in light of that, on today's episode, I wanted to bring you the five reasons why Ohio State's not just going to win the game on the 26th, but why they're going to win it by double digits. So before we dive into everything, just be sure to like this video and subscribe to the YouTube channel. I will be posting some of this content as well at BuckeyeScoop.com. So if you want to read through my uh, my evaluation of all of this, go ahead and check that out at BuckeyeScoop.com. It'll be on the Ask the Insiders board. You will need to become a member. So if you're not already, go ahead and subscribe today so that you can have access to all of the top content coming out of the entire staff here at Buckeye Scoop. Uh, and you won't miss a thing as we get closer to that November 26th matchup. Now. With that, let us go ahead and dive into our first piece here, uh, and that is going to be the number 100. Now, I'm sure most of you, like myself, remember back in 2020 uh, when Ryan Day, before the season, when Ryan Day at the uh, the Big Ten Media Days said that he was going to drop 100 on Jim Harbaugh and the Wolverines, only for that team up north to back out of the game due to complications of COVID. He was scared. He went running. But I promise you that Ryan Day and this staff have not forgotten that promise. And after last year's game and the disappointment that I think they they still relish to this point, I think he plans to make good on that. I don't think that Ohio State's going to call the dogs off. I don't think that, you know, if they get up big, that Michigan's going to be able to compete. And as we get into kind of some of the numbers here as we look, Uh, through some of these other points, I think it'll all kind of make sense and and wrap back around. But yes, Michigan has played very well this year. Uh, Ohio State has played very well this year, albeit the last few weeks have been pretty disappointing. I I would say we all agree on that. But man, I think just Ryan Day is going to come out and he is going to fire on all cylinders. Um, And I think that the end of the day, it may not be 100. You know, that's a lot of points. Let's be honest. It's, It's not going to happen that way especially with how good Michigan's defense is but it's going to be a theoretical 100 it'll be a lot of points I promise you that and I don't think that it's going to be particularly close in that sense either I think Ohio State's going to come out they're going to punch them in the mouth and they're going to make a statement that they are physical compared to what they were last year and the rumors and just the uh the oh man just the the offseason that you know, has been sitting in their heads all year long. And that brings me then to the next point here, uh, which is going to be 42 to 27, right? Obviously, it's the score of the game. I am one to believe that the score was not as indicative of how close of a call this was because uh, I don't know if you remember, but there was about five minutes left and Ohio State was within eight points. All they needed to do was get a stop defensively, turn it back over to CJ Stroud, and hope you know that the offense can build off of that momentum, tie the game, and put it into overtime, or you know at least extend it to that point. But that was there. I mean, the, the, yes, they got beat at the line of scrimmage the whole game, but there was still that opportunity. Eight points is eight points, and the defense just couldn't get a stop. So forty-two to twenty-seven, I don't think is indicative, in my personal opinion, of how close this Ohio State team came to actually tying it up and, and getting this game into overtime. But I promise, as well as Ryan Day remembers that 100, that C.J. Stroud remembers, Mayan Williams and Trevion Henderson remember, Jackson Smith and Jigba, should he play, uh, Marvin Harrison, Emeka Buka, everybody remembers. The offensive line remembers, especially with how, how badly beaten off of the line of scrimmage they were and they have been recently. And I think the defense is really going to remember. I mean, Jim Knowles has turned this unit around far and away better than I expected coming into this season. And I think that, you know, they haven't shown necessarily everything that they're going to. Um, And I think they're saving a lot for this team, specifically for this team. Uh, And they've been constantly reminded all offseason of the outcome, uh, all offseason of just the narrative that they're not physical enough compared to to Michigan, that uh, Michigan players are just, you know, 
stronger willed, uh, stronger physically, you know, and that they're just going to come out and punch Ohio State in the mouth and Ohio State's just going to, you know, be a finesse team and, and accept it and it's just not going to end well. Uh, and I think Michigan players have that air of confidence that we all are just uh, mad about, at least I am, um, that they think that that's going to be indicative of this series moving forward. And they forget that they've lost 17 of the last 20. Uh, and it, it hasn't been uh, as as close of a, of a rivalry in the last even 50 years compared to what it was if you look at the entirety of it. And I think Ohio State players are going to come out to prove a point, not just to themselves, but to everyone, including the committee. Uh, and they're going to make a statement that Ohio State is a physical team. They are also a finesse team. They can be. They can win a, a multitude of different ways, as we've shown throughout the season. Uh, but I think that just that sheer uh, power of will from this offseason and what everybody's saying about these guys, I think that's going to be key in how they perform. And I think being at home, especially, they're going to want to play and, and perform well in front of this home crowd. And I, I think they do. I, I tend to believe that they do. And part of what makes me feel even more confident is overall Big Ten conference play between these two teams. So each of these teams to date has played six conference games, three on the road, three at home. Obviously, Ohio State will be at home in this game. So I'm going to look primarily at the home statistics for Ohio State versus the away statistics for Michigan in this case. But if we look at both teams, Ohio State on average is beating Big Ten opponents on the whole, um, at, or at home, sorry, uh, by an average score of 50 to 14. So plus 36 point differential. Michigan beating Big Ten opponents on the road by an average score of 37 to 14. So a plus 24 point differential. Still a good margin there. Uh, Ohio State has played Wisconsin, Rutgers, and Iowa at home. Uh, Michigan has played Iowa, Indiana, and Rutgers on the road. Um, both teams are stout defensively in the second half of these games. Um, Michigan is giving up an average of, what is it, 4.67 points to opponents on the road in the second half this year, um, Big Ten opponents specifically. And Ohio State's giving up 5.67 points to opponents, Big Ten opponents, at home in the second half. So I think one other piece of this is, is who comes out and has the faster start. And that bodes well offensively for Ohio State. Being at home for Ohio State, they'll be able to come out, get a fast start against this Michigan defense, and be able to then, you know, ride that difficult second half that uh, that they tend to give their opponents and they'll be able to make those adjustments um, and if we look at the first half statistics as well again in big 10 play michigan is very different you know they've played the i think 70 what is it 76th hardest schedule uh, ohio state hasn't played a much harder one but they've played a more difficult schedule and that shouldn't go uh, without consideration. You know, I mean, when you have teams like Hawaii, Colorado State, UConn, you know, padding up some of these statistics for this team defensively, especially at the beginning of the year, then, you know, you're, you're not necessarily seeing how this team plays against a tougher, comp or a tougher opponent in Big Ten competition. So against uh, Big Ten opponents this year, uh, Ohio State is scoring... 23.33 and 21.5 points in the first and second half, respectively. Um, against Big Ten opponents, specifically at home, they're averaging 28.33 in the first half and 23.33 in the second half. Both are up from their average against all competition. Uh, for Big Ten opponents, giving up an average of 16.5 points per game, 13.67 at home. So that's that 14 that we talked about. Um, against Big Ten opponents for Michigan on the road, their first half points drop to 13.17. And their second half points jump up a little bit to 21.83. Um, but if you look even further in those, in those road games specifically, Big Ten road games, that point, uh, first half point differential drops even more. It's 12.33 points that they're scoring in the first half of Big Ten competition on the road. In the second half, again, that number jumps up a little bit more, 24.33. But again, they've played Iowa, they've played Indiana, and they've played Rutgers on the road. Uh, none of those teams are 
particularly offensively focused, right? So, no, they're not going to score a lot of points. And it's not to say that Ohio State has played much better competition at home, but the gap itself is, is what I think is is most impressive. And the struggles that Michigan has in the first half when they go on the road to a team that comes out and plays physical, like in Iowa, like in Indiana, maybe. We'll see. And we'll see how hard Indiana plays this weekend as well. Um, but... Ohio State is just the more consistent and, you know, even performs better against Big Ten competition when they're at home compared to the way that Michigan plays Big Ten competition on the road. And I think that bodes well, again, for that fast start. So if Ohio State comes out and fires on all cylinders, scores quickly, and I think they do, um, then I think they can run away with this game, especially in the second half when they make their defensive adjustments, uh, because just both teams are, are... defensively stout in the second half. So, you know, is J.J. McCarthy going to be able to stay in a shootout with this team? Is Jim Harbaugh going to be able to stay in a shootout with this team and, and coach a, a shootout in this team? Well, I I doubt it. I mean, they have the 93rd ranked uh, uh, passing offense. I mean, like, let's let's look at some of these numbers here. You know, they they have, yes, most of the advantage in some of the uh, defensive categories, whereas Ohio State has most of the advantage in the offensive categories. So, you know, the 93rd ranked passing offense, are they going to be able to step up and score at will against the 13th ranked, or I'm sorry, the 7th ranked pass defense, 6th ranked total defense? You know, I, I just don't see it. And I think Ohio State, while Michigan's defense has been good, they've also proven that they're going to be in close games when they're on the road. Uh, we look at the first half of the three games that they played on the road. They were down to Rutgers. They were tied with Indiana 10-10, to and they only led uh, Iowa by, I think it was 13. 13, so it was 13 to nothing at halftime for that game. But it's still closer than what you would expect for an Iowa team, right? That being said, I think Ohio State's just going to come out in the first half and we'll look at why I think that uh, here in a second. But I think they're going to come out. They're going to uh, to have the firepower and the will and the uh, just tenacity to come out, punch Michigan in the mouth, prove a point that they are physical and that Michigan's not just going to be able to to run all over them like they did last year. Um, And I think that they get up big a little bit early. Maybe Michigan makes a little bit of a run to end the first half, but then I think the second half, Ohio State's going to start to pull away, and and this offense is just going to continue to roll uh, and continue to just beat this defense down a little bit and prove that, you know what, this isn't last year's team. We are Ohio State, and this is going to go back to the last 20 years. Now, the next point here um, that I have is the wrinkles. We've heard it all year. We've heard, you know, what have we shown? What are we keeping hidden from a team, specifically Michigan? You know, we've heard that uh, Jim Knowles has only shown 20% of of the actual uh, formations that he has. We've heard that Ryan Day, you know, we've seen some of the wrinkles that Ryan Day has had to pull out over the last few weeks to get the win. Um, And have they gotten the win? They have. So have those wrinkles proved successful? They have. And do you think that Ryan Day has shown all of the wrinkles that he has in this offense? I don't. I think he has some some plays and some uh, some different looks specifically that he is going to use for Michigan. And I think they've been planning for a lot of this for the entire year because they knew coming into this season that this game was going to be the one that you circle, the one that ultimately leads to a Big Ten championship or decides who plays in the Big Ten championship and ultimately decides who likely then plays in the college football playoff. So he's going to be ready, and he's got those different plays in his playbook that he has specifically for Jim Harbaugh and this Michigan team. And I expect that those wrinkles are going to be mostly successful the same way that those wrinkles have been successful against Penn State, same way that they've been successful against Northwestern, with the finally C.J. Stroud pulling and, and running designed quarterback runs even. So... I look for some of those wrinkles to be able to to get the job done. And on the flip side, I also think that Jim Knowles has plenty of looks that he hasn't shown this year. Um, Whether it's specific blitz packages, whether it's different different schemes, whether it's different um, coverages, 
Uh, and I think he's going to come out and try to confuse J.J. McCarthy, a young J.J. McCarthy, and, you know, make him make changes, make Jim Harbaugh make adjustments on the fly. And will he be able to, when Jim Knowles has, you know, let's say 70% of what he's implemented for this defense available to actually switch things up, especially at halftime, switch things up even more. And this team has been practicing all of these for the entire season. So they're going to be crisp on it. They're going to know exactly what to do because they've worked it through in practice over and over and over and over again. And they'll be able to get those different looks, confuse J.J. McCarthy, and throw a wrench in what Michigan wants to do, but more importantly, what they are coming into this game expecting that they're going to do. And I think that's the key thing. Michigan has that air of confidence. They think they're going to come out and they're going to be able to do exactly what they did last year. And this is not the same defense. They're not going to be able to do the same things that they did last year. And we'll look at some of the numbers here again, uh, as you know, Michigan does have the edge in some of these, but there's one number in particular that I look at and I think is a stronger indication of, you know, the actual effectiveness of, of both of these teams offensively and defensively. And that's efficiency. Right. So again, as we look at the numbers here, you know, Michigan has the edge. Um, You know, they've been a a decently tough defense all year Um, and that shouldn't be overlooked, but so is Ohio State, Uh, you know, and they, while Michigan has the edge in most of the defensive categories here, you look at the scoring defense, third versus eighth, Uh, you look at passing defense, ninth versus seventh, rushing defense, first versus versus 13th. So that might be a bigger problem if Ohio State can't turn around some of the offensive line woes and, and get this running game going effectively. Um, total defense, second versus sixth. But, by, by, but vice versa, Ohio State has all of, well, except for one, all of the edges offensively. Scoring offense, one versus five. Passing offense, huge gap here, 19th versus 93rd. Rushing offense, Michigan leads fourth to 32nd. Total offense, though, 14th to 21st, right? So Michigan relies very heavily on their run game. We all know that. Blake Corum is a a great running back. Donovan Edwards is is very good as well. Um, And the offensive line is is good. You know, they they get to where they need to be. And are they better than Ohio State's offensive line? Yes, I would say they are. But look at these efficiency numbers, right? Even all of that aside, all of that aside, the total efficiency offensively and defensively Michigan, 12th in offensive efficiency, 7th in defensive efficiency, Ohio State, 1st in offensive efficiency, and 5th in defensive efficiency. So despite Michigan owning all of these statistical uh, you know, categories defensively, say for one, Ohio State is still better in defensive efficiency. So what does that tell you? You know, it, to me, it says that one, the numbers sometimes lie, you know, I'll, I'll put it out there. Numbers sometimes lie, or at least they don't tell you the entire story. And to me, oh, more than metrics themselves, I'm going to prioritize the actual efficiency metrics. One, because it takes more into account than just strictly statistics, especially when those statistics are occurring, right? They don't factor in garbage time points, garbage time scores, garbage time yards. And Ohio State has had fewer uh, of those kind of late uh, late game like or um, um, has had fewer of those needs uh, late game to keep the the first team offense and the first team defense in so you know Michigan has been in relatively close games for a longer period than Ohio State has Ohio State's beaten every team by double digits you know so these statistics while they tell one side of the story I just don't think they Tell everything. And I think uh, the efficiency numbers here specifically show that, yes, Ohio State defensively is potentially a better defense than Michigan, you know, because they're more efficient, because they get things done when they need to get them done, uh, and they do it fairly at will. And especially against Big Ten opponents, as, as we talked about earlier, at home, Ohio State is plus 36 against Big Ten opponents. Michigan on the road is plus 24. So 
and and that's against two out of two out of the three teams in those scenarios are the same teams, right? So, I don't know. Ohio State's played a diff, more difficult schedule. They're fifty third. Uh, Michigan's seventy sixth. So you know they're not only performing more efficiently against you know tougher competition, uh, but they're doing it in particular at home which is where the game is this year. And I think that that is going to be a huge factor. If this game was in Ann Arbor, I may be a little bit more concerned than I am. Uh, but I think everything really favors Ohio State in this, this year's game. And we can sit here and talk about all of the issues that have come up over the last few weeks with the offensive line, with potentially the play calling, with whatever, whatever you want. Um, but at the end of the day, this is still a top two team. This is still a national title contender and Michigan is too. Uh, but I just think Ohio state has the edge mentally. Um, maybe they get out physical somewhat, but not to the degree that they got out physical last year. Um, and even in getting out physical last year, it was an eight point game with five minutes to go on the road, hostile environment against a team that had the mental edge because they hadn't beaten this Ohio State team in however many years. Now you get Ohio State at home, Ryan Day still, uh, you know, upset from 2020, I would say, uh, still wants to, to get Jim Harbaugh in the shoe so that he can hang 100 on him. You get C.J. Stroud and, and this entire offensive and defensive unit that remembers what happened last year uh, and has been reminded of it constantly over the last 365 days. Let's call it. I'm rounding up. And they are going to want this more. Ohio State is going to want this more. uh, And I think they come out, they prove a point, and they have enough that they haven't shown that's going to confuse Jim Harbaugh, it's going to confuse Michigan more than Michigan has that's going to confuse Ohio State because we know what Michigan wants to do and that's going to be to come out and punch Ohio State in the mouth and run the ball the entire game. And if they have to rely on the passing game, which they might, I just don't think that they have what it takes to ultimately keep up with this Ohio State offense. And I think the defense for Ohio State, vastly improved from last year, is going to come out and is going to be the aggressor is going to force Michigan into situations that they just don't want to be in. And because of all of those things, I think Ohio State wins this game fairly handily. You know, I I, I want to say it's not going to be close at all, um, but I, I in my heart of hearts, I don't believe that. I think it will be somewhat close. You know, maybe Ohio State gets a, another touchdown to make it seem not as close, similar to, to what happened last year. Um, but I think this is a game where Ohio State controls most of of the game and controls most of the narrative. And I don't think it's it's uh, you know out of the question to say that this team will win this game by double digits. And I don't know what the line's going to be. It'll probably be somewhere close to uh, six and a half, maybe um, at most. Especially just depending on how I guess depending on how the next few weeks go. Um, I think it'll be probably closer to to that six and a half, maybe maybe a little bit less. But I'm taking Ohio State in this game by more than ten points, um, and I'm taking it to the bank. Ohio State is going to to get this back on, and they're going to then play for a Big Ten championship, probably against Illinois. They're going to beat Illinois, and then they're going to be the two seed most likely, and they'll play whoever's in front of them. And I think this team has everything within its reach to win a national championship. And if not this year, it's got to happen soon for Ryan Day. And and I think that this might be the year. You know, Georgia has looked good, but a lot of these teams look very beatable as well, Ohio State included. Um, And, man, I just have a a good feeling that this team will get it turned around more so than I've had uh, earlier in this week. But the more I've kind of thought about it, the more I've looked at it, I think Ohio State is is poised to to get business done, and uh, and I like the chances at, at getting to a national championship and winning the national championship this year. But it starts on November twenty sixth. Well, it starts tomorrow. Got to beat Indiana. Got to beat Maryland. But then on November twenty sixth, that's when the tests really start, and Ohio State's going to be ready. So fifteen days, 
and we will see exactly what I've been saying here. But these are the five reasons why Ohio State is going to win by double digits. As always, thank you, Scoop Nation, for your continued support. If you liked this episode, be sure to leave us a five-star review, like, and subscribe to the YouTube channel, and head on over to BuckeyeScoop.com so that you can have access to the Ask the Insiders board over the last few weeks of the regular season for what hopes to be an Ohio State Big Ten Championship as well as an Ohio State National Championship. I'm your host, Ryan McClincy, and as always, go Bucks.